Uh, all hands, this is your captain. Please prep your grav couches and get ready for the juice, because we're about to flip and burn and head back into the expanse. This will be a hygiene manoeuvre. I'm your Captain Andy, and I'm joined as ever by my illustrious First Officer, Mr. Elton McManus. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, but I'm staying away from you, because you sound, like, well poorly and stuff. Well, I, I've just come back from a little trip to Eros, Eros Station. Uh, yeah. you know, I went to go and see the sights, uh, and, I, and I've just developed this, you know, my throat's a bit fucked, and I've got a bit of a cough. Uh, and I got this weird glowing shit down my arm, so uh, I'm hoping it's nothing too serious. Well, hopefully it'll be all right for like the uh, next hour or so. I don't know. Yeah, as long as I get through the next hour, we're fine. So, so no problems there or anything. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, so I apologise to the listeners if this sounds a bit rough, um, but you know we're method here. Uh, and I am channeling the spirit of Julie Mao for the course of this episode. Good man, <laughs> that, that's your excuse. That's brilliant. I love it. Absolutely. I'm a professional here. Um, and what we're here to do is talk about episode nine of season one, Critical Mass. Uh, a flashback to Julie's origin story reveals her trajectory. James Holden and Miller finally meet and team up to get to the bottom of the strange emergency situation happening on Eros. As the true horror of events on Eros is revealed, an ailing Holden and Miller must overcome incredible odds if they hope to live to fight another day. What did you think, sir? Really enjoyed it. It's I a good episode, thought, isn't it? Yeah, I thought the first 12 minutes were really bloody good. For really. a flashback episode as well, you, you know, you're considering you're kind of retreading stuff we'd already seen, mm. but it's just done so well. The interesting thing is, when I first saw this episode, and in fact, every time I've watched this until now, it's always been, uh, when this was first broadcast, Episodes 9 and 10 were broadcast as one extra long episode. Ah, oh, okay. So it kind of, I was a bit taken aback when this ends. I was like, oh, wait, no, I have to wait now for the next bit. <laughs> okay, I haven't seen episode 10 yet, but I, yeah, I'm wondering if it, it does feel like a, a bumper episode. I, 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 I almost messaged you to say, do you want to just want to watch episode 10? We'll just do them both together. <laughs> uh, but then I was like, no, you won't have time to watch it. And I feel like death. So no, <laughs> yeah. no, no, I, I'm, I'm enjoying doing the weekly stuff. So we're going to stick to that. And, and guess what? Guess what? We've only got what? one more left. And it's still February. We're, we're, we've only got one more. We've done it. I mean, we have committed to doing two more seasons of this show, uh. but we are, we are finishing our mini series <laughs> podcast. In the type, we, touch wood, because we've still got another month, uh, episode to go, but we've, we've not missed an episode. N no, not yet. nearly did, but we didn't, so it's all good. We nearly did, but no, no one knows that, because we still released it on time. So <laughs> That's true, and now people are listening back to it, going like, what are they on about? I don't no, it's understand. Fine, it's fine, it's just a trip to, Ever, uh, to Eros, uh, yeah. we've already referenced it, it's fine. Good, um, good. Now, this is a little bit different in terms of uh, kind of revisiting this episode, because I don't think our usual method of location 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 would work so what i'd propose is let's talk about the flashback stuff first mm -hmm. and then let's maybe talk about earth and Tycho together and then do the rest of Eros stuff uh okay uh, yeah okay let's do that let's do that you're right with that yeah I, mean, I should have thoughts strong thoughts in other ways but uh mm. I think this makes the most sense to go this way. Yeah. Well, let, let's do the, the flashback first. Definitely. So we're basically, we're, we're, we're getting the story of Julie Mao, the person who has, she's been a presence throughout the entire series, but this is the first time we've seen her other than on video cameras since the first episode. Mm, that's and right. And a corpse last episode. <laughs> oh, God, yes. <laughs> so close as well. So close, but I don't think I would want to prod it or anything like that, even if she was alive with all that creepy stuff. I don't all think over. it was that. I don't think it was that close. I think it's presented to be close, mm. but you know, when when she dies, that that shit's still glowing on her. But when they go in there to the body, it, there's more. It looks almost like webs or protrusions coming out of it and it's yeah. not glowing anymore so i think i think you can imply a bit of times passed between that and that but that's largely besides the point i think we both agreed this is a horrible horrible way to go um yeah and i gotta tell you i mean this is i, I wouldn't want to show this to probably anyone under 15 this is proper body horror sort of stuff 
It is. And it reminds me, uh, I should have looked this up because I'm going to go from memory now and that ain't going to (laughs) work. There's a book and it's, I know it's an audio book, it's audio book, it's it's more like a a podcast now. Uh, It was by a guy who I'm blanking on the name. What I'll do, I will search the internet while we're going through this, and it's probably, everyone's favourite segment of man looks up shit on the yeah. internet. I'm, I'm not going to do it now. I will do it as we go through, and I'll leave some links in the show notes okay. because there was a book. Uh, what was his name? Scott Sigler. He, the author is called Scott Sigler, and he did a book. I think it was in Infection. It was called, and it's about like a an alien host, which comes to Earth, infected. Is it infected? It's infected. Have you just looked it up on the internet? I have just looked it up. Well yes. done. Well done. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> your, your internet foo is strong, I feel. It is indeed. <laughs> and it, this person gets like little blue triangles all over his body and they talk to him through his mind because they're part of his body. It's crazy. It's really good though. It's well worth anyone's time. But this sort of stuff... It reminded me of that book. Okay. And I really enjoyed that book. So I would highly recommend anyone go listen to that and tweet him and let him, let him know where you found it anyway. So, I, I mean, I, I, we're kind of dancing around more than we usually would do. But the whole sequence, once she gets on the station and she realizes she's got the disease, you know, she coughs up a load of gunk and then she sees it on her arms and... The fear in her voice while she's destroying all the power sources and the TVs and everything, and yeah. when she's crawling, it 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 a made my skin crawl, and I you know, you know, such a well of sympathy for her because, I mean, that's got to be properly horrible. I mean, that's up there with you know knowing you've got a terminal disease and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and just how alone she felt when you know she's reaching out to her doors. You know, calling for help, hoping someone will come and rescue her and just all alone. And it really, you know, just struck home of just how well realized that scene and sequence is. I mean, um, I'm not sure what the name of the actress is who plays Julie Mount. I will look that up now. There you go. Uh, no, I can't do it. I can't see it. Um, <laughs> it's but, Florence. Oh, f- favor. I think it is. Okay. Favier. But, she, she does a fantastic job and, you know, acts her heart out. It's, it's, it's great. And it, in a way, it's a shame that we just haven't had more of her throughout this series. Yeah. I mean, all the cast have been fantastic, but she's also fantastic. It'd been great to see more of her throughout the series to, to just see more of that. Not the horror side of it, just the good acting side of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know what you mean about would have been good to see more of her on screen. And I, Totally agree, because I think what she did with what little she was given was really, really good. But I feel that we've had her all the way through the series so far. She's, oh, been, she, she's been a present. She's been a presence throughout. Yeah. Without being there, because everyone's well, not everyone, but mostly Miller. But they've been talking about her, or we've been seeing these little echoes of her life around series station with uh, you know. And we saw that at the beginning of the episode, those little flashbacks to Miller talking about her and rummaging through her apartment and Mm -hmm. her flight suit and and all those bits. And we just kind of see she's been such a – this won't mean a huge amount to you, but I know some of our listeners you are familiar with uh, The Wrath of Khan, the Star Trek film. And the anecdote is um, Ricardo Maltabon originally didn't want to do it because he technically has very little um, screen time, but he decided to do it because – it feels like he's in that film a lot more than he is because everyone's always talking about him. Mm-hmm. Is it, it, that, you know, they're there even when they aren't physically there. Yeah. And I think we had a lot of that with Julie, which was great. Yeah, yeah. But I, I feel what we did get and the extra bits on here. And it, even just looking at the old stuff that we've already seen before, like the, the zero G stuff with her hair floating around. I, I, I think you rem- remarked on it in the first mm. episode about wondering how they did her hair in there. It yeah. looks so good. Looks so good. It's great. And I love how well it's kind of, you know, obviously they just filmed it at the same time, but the continuity between what we had in the first episode and here, mm. you know, you you can see when the bits sync up and you've got the little bits on either side of it, which is great. Mm-hmm. And and 
I, it, it's it's almost like a nostalgic feeling of going back to that first episode when we're seeing the um uh you know her on the Anubis there and you know you hear that sound effects of the missiles launching but now we have context to what's going on yeah. and you know, can fill those dots you know and fill those bits in um and and it it's just a testament to how well the showrunners have kind of realized the show mm. and, and brought it together yeah so they were they were on the scopuli with the, yeah. well she was on the scopuli with two other uh, guys Mm-hmm. And they were belters, yes? Yeah, OPA belters. They were OPA because we saw the, the tattoo there and we heard the accents as well. Yeah. And they were going to intercept the Anubis. Well, yeah, they were off to uh, intercept the Anubis uh, at asteroid uh, CA2216862. That's my new thing now. I'm making notes of the asteroid numbers when we come across them. <laughs> good man, good man. Um, they're, they're catchy but, as well. They are, they are. You know, it just rolls off the tongue there. But yeah, they were off to intercept the Anubis, but they clearly don't know what the Anubis is. Mm. And we do pick up some interesting dialogue from what they're saying here. Right. We we know what well, firstly, they're not expecting a gunship, because when they see it's a gunship, they're quite shocked. They're expecting but, scientists, aren't they? Well, they're expecting scientists, but Julie says whatever her father's weapon is, it's on board the Anubis. Mm. And we've already met her father, or seen her father, yeah, in uh, one of the earlier episodes. It's your friend from Lost, isn't it? Yes, uh, 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 Marvin Candle or Edgar Halliwax, I think it is. Ah, yes, but he's well, in Lost. Yes, yes, but well, h- here he is, Jules Pierre Mao. and and I think this is the first time it's directly linked him to any of this. Yeah, uh, in, in in the show, and and I got to tell you. It's been a struggle throughout a lot of this series, just kind of biting down on that revelation for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, He's already um, my favourite character. <laughs> he, he is great. Um, and, and we get to see him again later on, which is fantastic. Cool. But yeah, so, so we get that. And, uh, you know, this, what they think is going to be a, a transport ship full of scientists is suddenly a stealth gunship full of military officers. Um, the same soldiers we saw in the Doninger. You know, so mm. they're heavily armed and the scopuli has got no chance. And I thought it was great how they boarded them. Just kind of, they did a, a really quick flip and burn, like yep. blink and you miss it. And then they just launched that breaching pod and it didn't like attach to the ship. It plowed into it. It just it, went poof. It kind of bit down on it, didn't it? Yeah. It's almost as if it was biting through and it, almost wiggling. You know how some crabs kind of hide themselves in the sand like, yeah, by it, wiggling. It, mm-hmm. it, it felt like that. It was trying to wiggle its way through to the hull. Yeah. But we don't yeah. see what they ha- what happens to the, the guys on there. They're just dead, aren't they? No, we well, we kind of see uh, a little bit. We see when they're pulled on to the Anubis, um, they're getting beaten with Julie. And then the scientist says, you know, not her, leave her. Mm. Um, she's a complication. Ah, uh, yes, yeah. And uh, what we then see is... The guy who she'd been kind of flirting with on the bridge, yeah, uh, get spaced, as you do. Yeah, what, why yeah, not? Takes take, takes a long walk out of a small air- airlock. Uh, but what's interesting is uh, we have the scientist is ill. It's that old science fiction trope. The, the scientist is going, oh, it's hot in here. Uh, turn uh, turn the heat down, and you know, coughing and just sounding a bit rough. I didn't. I did. I missed that. I know that she said that she was feeling hot, and she asked to turn it down. I thought well, that's cheeky. Just go find the thermostat and do it yourself. But okay, I no, get it now. That's that's a classic. That's a Star Trek trope. That is. That's yeah. that's a a traditional. Gee, it's hard in here. Someone, uh, someone, go and turn down the air conditioning. Damn it! I, no- <laughs> yeah. I I should have been watching Star Trek for the last thirty years. I know it. Well, we've been telling you this for at least for the last ten. So. <laughs> <laughs> um and there's another nice bit of dialogue um you know it's now without any doubt they were waiting for the canterbury that was a deliberate attack mm. uh, it wasn't just a target of opportunity and she says the sooner we get mars and the earth at each other's throats the sooner their eyes will be off eros so the anubis instead of it being intercepted by the scopuli are we saying that the the Anubis was intercepting the Scopuli instead? No, the Anubis was there to intercept the Cant. 
and it just so happened that the scopuli was there and they used that as a good decoy. Basically, yeah. Right. Okay. The scopuli was not part of the original plan. It just showed up and they were like, well, fuck it, we'll use that then. I suspect they'd have probably just planted the distress call on the asteroid or something like that. Yep. Uh, but no, that showed up. So, uh, or they'd have just found another ship and used that. Yeah. Um, but they, they were there waiting for the can because they wanted to plant the, um, distress beacon with the Martian serial numbers because they wanted people to link it to Mars. Mm hmm. So, so this was all part of their plan. And they would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for those damn pesky kids. <laughs> yeah, the five remaining ones. Yeah. Um, and we, we kind of catch up with where Julie was in episode one. We see her break out, get into the engineering compartment. But then she touches the goo. Don't touch the goo. Never touch the goo. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Can I, can I just jump back very slightly? It's, yes. I think it's always cool when you have like these sort of flashback things. When you, when you have a scene like the Canterbury being blown up and you've already been introduced to Julie and you yeah. know that she's in like a, a, a different thing, but you're not too sure where the timeline fits. When you rewatch that, and realise she's on that ship. Yeah. Then you're like, oh, it just gives me a little tingle somewhere. That it's it's nice that it all links together. You're like, she's there, but we don't know, but we do know. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's a cool reveal, and and it's one of the nice things watching this through for a second or third time is little things like that you know about, but you're still in awe of how well it's been done. Yeah. To kind of you know convey that across, so that's cool. We also see just going back a little bit further as well, because if you recall when um, Holden listens back to the distress call, he could hear a woman's voice, mm -hmm. and we see how she transmitted that. She had a short range com or something there, running out on battery power, and she just managed to get a few words out before it died. Yep. And yeah. It's just the fact that he happened to be listening at that moment that brought the can there. Ah, uh, I. Okay, I thought that was no, because they wiped the the memory yeah. banks, didn't they? They wiped the they, so she recorded it and sent it out, and so and he 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 was just listening on on scanning the band waves, really. No, I think he was listening to the recording, but he was just listening to that bit of the recording. Oh, okay, right, and hearing hearing her voice on there was like, oh, okay, well maybe we should really go and help this yeah. out, mm -hmm. right. Okay. See, it's all fitting together. I, I'm, everyone else has got this. And I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I, I'm about six weeks behind everyone else again. <laughs> but that's the way it happens, I'm afraid. Now, don't sell yourself too short. This mm. is very well put together and, and this is how you're supposed to be kind of coming to it. Yeah. So I think, I think you're okay. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. No, no, it's, it's, it doesn't get boring. Sometimes when you do have a, a flashback and you have, all the stuff you've already seen and you rewatch it again and again, it gets a bit watered down, a bit thin. It's, it's sometimes the writers are just trying to like wink at the camera and say, hey, see how clever we are? See? Yeah. See? I don't but think it isn't they're like doing that. it here. No, they're not. doesn't feel that way anyway. No. Um, if you recall last week, we spoke about the people being sucked into the reactor and we saw another nice little shot of that this time around. Yeah, saw the... Yeah. Saw the the body flailing. Do we recognise that person? Was that person the the guy going to turn down the thermostat? I I, I couldn't tell you if it was him or not, but uh, he, he's a thermostat uh, guy, as far as I'm concerned. It, okay, fine, thermostat guy. Yeah, well, he, he he's 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 found a thermostat now, <laughs> and uh, Julie has now turned it down properly. It is mm -hmm. it is properly cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so she's the one that hides the ship as well. She is. Well, the ship was on a um, an automatic course to Eros, um, but she changed its flight plan to that asteroid to give it somewhere to hide. Yeah, and then she, um, you know, sends a message to to Doors to just tell him that she has it. Right. Okay. So why is it on the way to Eros? Is that where? Is that where? Um... Julie's father is. No, that's where the experiment is to take place. That. That's why the 
they're locking it everything down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, er- Eros was always the intended. Eros is going to become the new Phoebe. Oh yeah, very much so. Very, very much so. That's that's what is kind of implied throughout here, and and we hear that later on when Miller's talking to um, Holden about how. Uh, we'll, we'll get to this in a little bit, but talking about how how can they be ready for this, you know, ship explosion mm. if it's just happened because they were expecting it, they did it themselves. So, yeah. Nah. Uh, like like the lady said though, they wanted to get Mars and Earth at each other's throats so eyes would be off Eros. Yep. Gotcha. Oh, so, it's so good though. Oh, th- there's lots of these <laughs> little things where I'm just thinking about it, going, yeah, I. I I caught it, but I didn't quite compute it as well as what I hoped I had. And yes, yeah, it's, it, it's all there now. It's all, it's all there. Cool. It's, all, it's all coming together. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we hear Julie, you know, she's talking about the, the, the stuff on the reactor, how it's killed the entire crew. She's the only one on board. So, I mean, that one of itself is going to be kind of terrifying. Yeah. Um, I don't know if she realizes at that point that she's infected, but I mm-hmm. think she might be worried. And, you know, she's like, come and get me. At Eros, because I'm not staying on this ship. I'm 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 leaving this ship. Mm. So she hops in the shuttle and uh, off she trots. And uh, we know what happens to the Anubis later on. <laughs> yeah, yep, certainly do. I I don't. I think that she. Well, she probably was feeling a bit ill on the way there, but it was only until like she really coughed up when she realised, well, hang on, this ain't right. That's not good. Well, up until that point, you can just pass it off as a cold or something else. You yeah. know, it's just, you know, space sickness, whatever. But no, it was it was at that point when she coughs up that stuff that she kind of realizes that's what it is. Mm. Um, and yeah, she's just desperate to try and get hold of Dawes to, you know, get someone to come and help. Because, you know, Dawes is a charismatic motherfucker who's recruited her into the, uh, into the OPA and doesn't he, answer. He... He's got their messages, hasn't he? He's he's kind of ghosting her and just, yeah, okay. I know exactly what's going on here. If you've encountered that ship, then you've probably screwed yourself over anyway. But Well, it's, I, it's weird because we know that Fred Johnson's picked up the messages because he knows where Lionel um, Polanski Plansky, yeah. was messaging from. So... We know Fred Johnson's picked him up, so we have to assume that Dawes has as well. And she's calling herself Lionel Plansky as well. Yeah, well, that's her code name. Yeah. But, it, yeah. Yeah, so, so I mean, the two questions there are, did Dawes receive a message, and if so, why did he ignore it? And the second one is, how does Fred Johnson, how has Fred Johnson picked up those messages? Because, you know, is he working with Anderson Dawes? Is he... How part of the OPA is he outside of just, you know, um, sympathies for them and known mm. associates? Uh, so yeah, that, those are the kind of questions that are kind of being raised by that. Okay. Why did, why did Dawes, I think he just thought her as expendable. I think he was too focused on series and the water issues there. Well, not so much the water issue, so much as just consolidating his power. Yeah. You know, he kind of sees an opportunity to effectively seize independence for series. So yeah. Maybe that's kind of what his focus was on. No, that, that's that's a good one. I like that. So, uh, yeah, but I don't know. Uh, what that, that might well be the case there. I'm just wondering with Johnson as well, though, how would he... He's got fingers in every pie, though, hasn't he? Oh, yeah. He's a... Uh, I mean, we we know he was a colonel in the uh, UNN Marines, mm. but now he's working for the OPA. We know Earth hates him. Yeah, uh, Earth Earth are sending a battleship to go and uh, deal with him. Are these two talking to each other? That's the question. Are are they on the same page, or are they tripping each other up? Hmm. Ah, uh, I say I feel like Dawes would want that. No, I don't know. No, I'm just thinking out loud now. Shut up, Elton. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Before we go on, I don't want to reference. We've got a full intro again. Yay. Okay. Yes. Um, I wasn't too sure if, if that was my copy or not. 
Your review copy? Mm, my <laughs> review. I have access to the Amazon Prime. And yeah. last couple of episodes, I've been watching it on Amazon. Yeah. And this time, for some reason, I used my review copy. And that intro came up. I was like, oh, intro. Okay. Excellent. And it's got like a, it had like a nice big previously on in front of it as well. Yeah. So that was handy. I like that. I, I think it, because this was originally, like I said, part of a bigger one ep- single episode, since they've cut it up, they had just a bit more time so they could show the full intro. And it was just nice to see that again. Yeah. Gotcha. I do love the intro for the show. Hmm. Um, and, and all those little details there, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I wish I'd seen that every single. I don't know if it become boring or not, though. It doesn't. No. You, no. you see it a lot more in seasons two and three. Good. Um, and, and it's like the Game of Thrones one where it changes based on what's happening through the story. Like if there's an episode focused more on Tycho, they'll make sure they show Tycho Station. Yeah. You know, so so I, I always like that. They'll always show Earth and Mars and the Moon, but then the rest of it kind of just depends on what we're going to see. So, yeah. No, it's so that's cool. cool. Um, yeah, I think the only other bit to really talk about from the flashback sequence is, you know, poor Julie's death, which we've already kind of touched on a little bit. But, you know, she died alone, uh, scared in 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 the room from, um, well, I guess we may as well give it its proper name since they've said it in this episode, uh, from exposure to the proto molecule, mm. um, which it, it's a really, really well done effect it's it's horrible it's proper body horror sort of thing it's that kind of thing that makes you just kind of skin crawl when you see it happening yeah um uh, and and like just how you know her last words were you know to her mum uh don't let him sell the razorback yeah uh, and it, it's just that kind of touching moment it you know it, it just kind of reverting back i suppose to an almost childhood innocence there um and yeah, it, it kind of really got to me. And and then when she kind of sees an image of Miller, I mean, I don't know why she saw that. There's no reason why she should see it. She's never seen him. I don't know what that is or what it symbolizes, but it just kind of, you, you feel like even if he got there in time, there was nothing he could do. That was weird because he had the bird there as well, didn't it? Flapping yeah, and, and the necklace thing, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I, okay. I, mm, I'm hesitant to, to say this. Say it. You can always edit it out. <laughs> no, I won't edit it out, but I'm, right. I'm just, is there some sort of time issue here where this is like a, I don't know how to say it though. That's the thing. Will there be, time travel involved <laughs> kind of wanted to I are, want, are there going to be some time, time shenanigans to... yeah well, well I, I'm sorry to tell you that you and uh, Ian Lee won't be reviewing the Expanse uh, yeah uh, anytime soon with Flux Capacitor because <laughs> Flix Capacitor sorry because no at, at least to the best of my knowledge there's no time travel involved here I, I, I kind of want time travel to be in everything though I, I think it well, makes everything better well just remember we're all moving forward through time at the speed of light so you know there is uh, some time travel involved. That is true. It, it's weird that she saw Miller, though, because she's had no connection with him. She hasn't seen an image of him or anything like that. And then all of a sudden you see a, pic- a picture of him and that bird that he saw. Is it, like, representing angels or or, or what? Weird little thing. I don't understand it. I, I have a... <laughs> I have a theory which might explain it. Mm. And yes, it might involve some kind of time travel sort of thing. Mm. But I can't talk about it. Okay. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> so, so yeah, we're just going to have to put a pin in that, I'm afraid. There's, there's nothing I can... Re- I have a theory. If, for some reason, an appropriate moment comes to talk about that theory... Yep. We can do. If I remember, we'll have a call back to this bit moment. Okay. But as of right now, I can't really talk about it. But that- it's the only thing I can think of that makes sense in the context of what we're seeing. But there's no way at this point of watching The Expanse to know what that would be. Yep. Therefore, 
there's no way we can talk about it. That, if that is makes any sense at all. <laughs> yeah, that is absolutely fine. I just brought it up. That's cool. Yeah. That's that's fine. It's it's just weird. Like oh. no, no, it, it it is very weird. And I was even thinking as it came in, I'm like, well, how does this work? I mean, I'm like, well, the only way this could work would be if blank. Mm. Okay, maybe it is blank. I don't think it's blank. And if it is blank, it's weird that they don't explain blank more. Mm. But that's the only thing that would make sense to me. So when we get to blank, I'll talk about blank. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I will talk about... I don't even know what blank is, but I, I will talk about blank as well. If I if I remember when mm. we get to blank, we'll talk about blank. Okay. But, um, well, I'll tell you what, let's have a quick... Cause most of this episode all takes place on Eros, mm-hmm. but let's very quickly just touch on the stuff on Earth and Tycho. Okay. Because then we can just spend the rest of the episode just talking about the Eros stuff, mm-hmm. where it's the meat and the potatoes of the episode, I suppose. Yep. So, uh, back on Earth, uh, we've got Avasarala visiting, um, uh, the, uh, the former Chris? Martian ambassador. What, the, the ambassador's name was, uh, Frank de Graff. Yep. And it's her husband, Craig. Oh, Craig. I thought it was Chris, but yeah. yeah okay. No, no, her name's Christian. That, that's Christian right. Avasarala, yeah. Um, and, you know, he committed suicide last episode. Yes. And, you know, she's turned up and, you know, Craig is pissed. Quite understandably so. He is pissed, but he's in, he's so angry that he's calm. And that is the worst anger to, to be involved in, I think sometimes when you're when you've upset someone to the point that they're showing that they're not upset, it doesn't bother them, and you're like, oh no, I've doubly it, pissed you off, haven't I? You know, you know, when you were a kid, the worst thing you could hear from your parents was, "I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed." <laughs> it's 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 that times a hundred. It's exactly um, that, isn't it? Yeah, and and to be absolutely fair, she totally deserves it. Mm-hmm. Um. And, you know, she kind of goes, oh, I heard he was doing consulting for shipyards. And he's like, no, he was just paying for trips himself because, you know, he just didn't want to sit around the office. Mm. Um, she basically ruined his life. And yeah. we we can question if he ends justified the means or, or anything like that. But she took advantage of him for her own benefit yeah. for what she thought was right. And she effectively ended his life, which was... um pretty damn harsh of her <laughs> she screwed up both their lives didn't didn't she and so yeah. deserves that short shrift and i like when craig says that you know frank used to say you know you could never stay mad at that damn woman but he goes i'm not frank yeah there you yeah go. um then it's like yeah no no you that yeah damn you damn you and then she <laughs> goes i want to go and say goodbye and he just kind of walks off and and he she just goes and starts stooping around his office, stealing his pencils. <laughs> well, once again, that's the uh, the underhandedness of her, isn't it? She's she's there for intelligence gathering. She's there doing what she thinks she has to for Earth. I mean, and I think that's the only thing we can say about her. Everything we've seen so far, she's not doing it for her personal ambitions. Mm-hmm. She's not doing it to kind of further herself or to win political office for herself. She's doing it because she thinks this is what's best for Earth. Hmm. And that's really the only saving grace she has. Um, but does she does she see Earth as herself? If she saves Earth, she's saving herself. She's saving her family. So really, her priorities really are family and herself. But she likes to think that it's Earth instead. I don't think so. I don't get that impression from no. her. I, I, I do think that she is very much, she, she'll do whatever she can do to protect Earth at any cost. I, I mean, I honestly think anyone except potentially a husband and grandson, she would sacrifice for Earth. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, you know, she's, uh, you know, she's there and she's just kind of, you know, she looks like a, She's effectively shoplifting, it looks like, the way she's kind of like rummaging through his desk. And yeah, oh, what did you think about his magic pencils? They made a point about him, about picking up them three pencils. I was like, why would she poach them? Yeah. And then when you saw what she was doing with it, and 
tapping it on her little, I don't know, iPad y thing. And it was coming up, no data. I was like, oh, I want one of them. I so but would want- you want, why would you want one? Because it means someone else could then just see all the shit you've written with it. That, yeah, that's true. You know what it's going to be? It's going to be just loads of cocks in margins. You, you know what I do. I do know what you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like it, it, the, the use of every pencil throughout the entire history of English secondary school system. It's just cocks in margins. Mm-hmm. That's all it is. Yep. Yep. <laughs> or, or some of the books as well. And there's like some guy, I know, shoeing a horse. And you have those, to draw a big cock on him. Those weird, those weird S's that we used to draw in schools as well. You know, it's going to be, it's nothing but that. Oh, the big bubbly ones. Yeah. 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 So. And, and it'll be yeah. shopping lists as well. How can yeah. you have no data on one of them pencils? Yeah. And, <laughs> Okay, I'm guessing they're not real pencils. They're like some electronic pencils, but it's it's a bit skeuomorphic, so you actually think it, it is a, a pencil. But th- there has to be something written on all of them. Bollocks, is there no data on any of them? <laughs> there has to be you know, a shopping list or uh, a, a recipe or, like you say, a little doodle, some uh, noughts and crosses. I don't know. There's got to be something. That would have been cool. Just to throw up like a noughts and crosses or a shopping list or a TV. Maybe even circling the red circles in the Radio Times around Christmas time. Yeah. That would have been good. <laughs> Some Sudoku going on there as mm-hmm. well. <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah. But still, magic pencils, uh, wave of the future. I still and, want and one we, though. Yeah. And, and we see that uh, he's been researching uh, some sh- uh, fusion drives mm. from the Bush shipyards. Um, but these are all assigned to some unknown ships. Yeah. I thought these were going to be the engines from the Tyco, the Tyco station. Yeah. That's where I naturally assumed it would be. And I noticed that it did say the... Bush Naval, is it Bush? Na- Na- no, no. Uh, when she's looking at it, it just says Bush Shipyards. I it's thought later it said on. Naval. No, Fred Johnson says they're the Naval Shipyards. Oh, okay, fine. I've written it down as that. Still, it's um, yeah. Uh, you know, she knows these drives are from the Bush uh, Shipyards, but when Fred sends out his message sharing the Doninger data, mm-hmm. and she brings that up alongside it. Then you see these ships and we see the Doninger's data. We see the drive signatures, which match what she's got from uh, Frank's data from his magic pencils. And we see the outlines and everything. And then she's put the dots together there almost. It's like dot, dot, dot. Yep. And then it's just a case of, oh, ooh, the, the plot thickens because these ships have been built on Earth. Yeah. Well, at least the engines have. No, no. Uh, he says the ships have been built on Earth. Uh, Fred Johnson says the ships have been built on Earth as well. So from what we, we know now, the people on the Anubis, they're Earthlings. Yes. Y- you've, you've gone quite quiet. No, no, they, they are. I, I, I'm still dying. Uh, but yeah, no. They, oh, okay, they, cool. They, they, well, well, yeah, they're humans. Yeah. But, and I can't definitively say they're from Earth, but I can tell you they're not Martian. Yeah. No, that, that's cool. That's fine. So we, okay. So these stealth ships have been built on Earth. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they've been built on Earth. Yes. But maybe sold to someone else. Or maybe not. Well, it's Stolen? the thing we don't. Well, they've been built, and as far as Avasarala can tell, none of them are connected to any military operations, including Black Ops, because you know when she did the search, they said no data available. Yeah. So it's either something that's above her pay grade, mm-hmm. and when you consider that she's two heartbeats away from the head of the UNN, that's kind of terrifying. Yeah. Because it means there's only two people above her which potentially could have authorised those ships or someone else is working on their own there. Or 
it's another party who's, you know, a private individual or something who's managed to coerce a naval shipyard to build a series of warships in secret using stealth tech, which is so expensive only Mars can afford, mm. um, and not tell anyone about it. This is confusing. I like it, but it's confusing. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. I'm, co- I, I just don't, there's something that we have, we haven't been told yet. There's something else there that we haven't been told yet where it's coming from or who is authorized. I just, I'm a little lost. I, I, I think I'm supposed you, I, to be though. I don't know. I think in this episode, you're supposed to at least be beginning to put the pieces together. Yeah. I thought I was, though. That's the thing. We'll I leave th- it for now. We'll leave it for now. I, 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 I think we should get answers in the next episode for you. Okay. If if we haven't got it yet, but yeah, it's it's all, all we know is uh, it's it's uh, it's complicated. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Okay. Right. So also, is there without anything saying else? anything, without saying anything, mm. I think it's very, uh, when Fred's giving his speech. Yeah. There's a shot of Aaron Wright looking very unimpressed. Just going to leave that there. Just going to put that there on the shelf for you. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think you've said it. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Just going to leave that there. All yeah. right. So let's get back over to Eros, shall we? Yeah, go on then. So uh, now previously in the uh, Blue Falcon. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Just before we go, you, you, you know you said about um, Pierre as well. Jules Pierre. Oh, no, this would be on Eros as well, wouldn't it? Okay. No, let's let's go back to Eros and we can we can do that when we get... Yes. When, when we're in, introduced to him. Yeah, okay, fine. Sorry, I, I thought we'd missed something, but no, we we haven't reached it yet. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we, we kind of have the aftermath of them finding Julie. And uh, Miller's pretty devastated by it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, th- I think he thought he was going to white knight, ride in and rescue her, you know, and find absolution or at least understanding and... It makes sense, yeah. Why everything's happened, but real life doesn't work like that. Poor guy. Yeah, he's he's lost his drive now, isn't he? He's a bit like, oh, okay. And we're kind of left with that was supposed to be like you say, like the, the the white knight moment, and it's supposed to be all happy and lots of trumpets playing and everyone cheering and oh, okay we've saved the young lady and really it's just well we better walk back down the stairs back down to the mess with all the dead bodies and stuff like that <laughs> and that's is it sammy or sam semi semi sorry semi Tima. that's it yeah. he's he's waiting down there as well isn't he oh yeah and he's well, like he, kind of uh miller called him at the end of the last one he said he, he sent a message saying you're going to get a call for gunshots or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's me. Come down here yourself. Yeah. That's right. And he's kind of like, well, you kind of made a mess. <laughs> yeah. Made, made a big mess. And there, there's lots of guns drawn straight away. It's like, no, no, we're, we're, this, is, this is proper Western stuff. Oh, yeah. This is a full on Mexican standoff. There. This is, yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, you know, you've got Amos has got his guns out and, uh, Sammy's got his guns and he's like, you know, put your guns down, not happening. Mm-hmm. And it's just when Miller just kind of walks down, he's, he's like oblivious to everyone. He's just like, bump, bump, bump. And, you know, Sammy's like, lets them go, but says, don't leave the station without talking to me. And then gets out. Uh, and just then, what, you know, after they go and have the usual, you know, uh, punch up bit moment, you know, what's going on. Um, we get the scientists show up. Yeah, these are the guys that draw the blood, aren't they? Well, yeah, uh, we, we find out his name's Dresden. Yeah. Uh, you know, he kind of shows up and, you know, Semi's like, you know, I'm CPD. And he goes, CPD, you work for me. Yeah. So we, we know this guy's connected or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, he goes on upstairs 
to, to where Julie is to examine it. Draws a blood sample and we see it's got blue glowy shit in her blood. Um, I like the guy says, you know, should I, should I be wearing a mask? And he's like, it's not airborne, but don't touch anything. Yeah. Uh, but he says, you know, there's enough, enough here for everyone prepare for the injections. Yeah. You know, we don't know anything else about from that. But then he goes and, uh, sends his report to Jules Pierre where he says, uh, yeah, I'm afraid she's dead. But on the plus side, we've got a lot of this weird shit to do stuff with. And, uh, poor old Jules has uh, got a tear in his eye. <laughs> yeah. This is what I wanted to mention. Okay. That is a grim way to turn around and say, yeah, your daughter's dead. Uh, by the way, here she is on the video screen. There she is. Look, should we zoom in a little bit? Whoa. Zoom in on her face. Like, that's no way to tell a father that his his daughter's passed away. It's really not. But, I mean, I think at this point we can spend a couple of minutes and just talk about... It, it's pretty clear Jules Pierre is behind this shit. It's his like, weapon, isn't it? It's his weapon or whatever it is. Um, you know, Dresden mentions that they found it on Phoebe. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, he said it's the proto-molecule, you know, the revelation we had on Phoebe. There's a banner behind Jules Pierre saying evolution of a proto molecule mm-hmm. which has got a map of Eros's um subway network with four big four or five big radiation symbols on it. That's right, yeah. Um and then Dresden says uh the only way we can learn about a proto molecule is by letting it learn. Yeah. Which sounds terrifying. <laughs> well that's what the I'm guessing that's what the injections or prepare the inject. There's enough for the injections because there's the whole place goes on lockdown, doesn't it? Well, that, yeah, that comes a little bit after that. Mm. But yeah, uh, I mean, it's clear that everything we're seeing going along here is going to some sort of plan. This is intended to happen. Yeah. I mean, I don't think they, well, they clearly didn't intend for julie to be killed or to be involved at all you know remember Mm. she was a complication she ran away without her father's permission but that thing being on eros the proto molecule being there that's all planned that's why he wanted her found yeah so she wouldn't get tied up in it she wouldn't end up brown bread because of it because well blue bread in this instance well yeah (laughs) moldy bread there you go moldy bread yeah because he knew that this was on its way to Eros and she was on her way there as well. And so he didn't want her anyway. Not that he wanted her back. He just wanted her safe. Yeah. Just just away from this. Obviously, Julie's figured out something's going on, but she's assuming it's some sort of weapon. Mm. You know, she thinks it's a bioweapon or whatever it is. Um. So she's gone off with the OPA to expose it, to stop it, to try and make things right, and has managed to get herself, um, well, killed by it. So th- this has come from Phoebe. It's now on Eros. Mm-hmm. I know you probably can't say, but. You're going to ask me anyway. <laughs> I'm going to, and please feel free to say, no, moving on. Did this originate on Phoebe? Oof. Because I don't think this is his creation. When when you say like it's his his weapon, it sounds like it's his creation. This is I just something it, they I think found. It's, yeah, I, I I think it's safe to say it's something they found on Phoebe. Mm. But the interesting thing about Phoebe, and this is real science, not something from the show. But there is a school of thought. I'm actually just going to check this online to make sure this is in fact correct. But there is thoughts that Phoebe is an ex-solar uh, planetoid. Mm-hmm. It's something that's come in from outside of a solar system right. and was captured by the um, uh, uh, gravity of Saturn as it was passing. Right. So Phoebe came from outside of a solar system. Cool. Okay, so mm, 
I, I wonder if they're using that. See, once again, I'm talking out loud. I yeah, shouldn't yeah. talk out loud. <laughs> it just made me sound even more stupid than what I am. I do want, I just want to clarify though, this is only a theory about where Phoebe could come from. It's not something that's proven proven because we've never visited Phoebe. Yeah. You know, we've not done it. You know, we've just, you know, they've had satellites have flying, flown by and had a look. It's just, it's a theory which might explain why it's slightly irregular. Yeah. But it's, uh, within the context of the expanse, it is postulated that Phoebe came from outside the solar system. Right. Okay. Is it like a car? Is it got like windows on it and they can drive it around? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, spoiler on the back, been through Halfords. <laughs> got glowy lights underneath. Glowy blue lights underneath. No, <laughs> oh, shut oh, up, Elton. You're, you're connecting the dots now. <laughs> <laughs> um, very ominously, though, Jules Pierre says, well, we, we will proceed as planned. So, okay. um, so yeah, yeah. Uh, Whatever evil shit they're up to, it's carrying on. <laughs> well, they've got samples now. They can poke that around, can't they? They're, well, presumably, feels... they lo- presumably they would have lost their samples when the Anubis was destroyed. Ah, okay, yes. And now, oh, right, okay. And Fred Johnson knew exactly where that was, and he wanted it destroyed. Fred Johnson didn't want it destroyed. Oh, Fred no. Johnson wanted to know where Lionel Polanski was. I don't think he knows what's there or anything yeah. like that. He just wanted to get Polanski. Um, the only ones who wanted it destroyed, as it were, were Holden and his crew. Yeah. Because they saw it. They saw what it was, what it had done. And so uh, uh, they made it go boom. So why didn't... Why didn't Holden want her corpse in the room and stuff like that destroyed? I don't think there was a way to do it. Because he, he'd he seen it reanimate on that ship. She, he knows that she's from that ship and she's in that state there. But there was no discussion as to, right, we've got to destroy this or remove this or quarantine it or anything like that. It was just, no, let's go downstairs. Well, I suppose it's slightly different. He hasn't seen it reanimate off of a person. No. Just off of the reactor when that was switched on. And even then, that's, you know, slightly different. It looks different. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, ha- ha- without wanting to get overly morbid, it's kind of really difficult to completely destroy a body. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got to go get a plastic cup, a uh, plastic container, a yep. load of lime. Um, you know, I've seen Breaking Bad. You don't want to do that in a bathtub. Yeah, just don't do it in a bathtub, though. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, I I don't know why. He, I mean, you know, he had to leave because, as he said, the police are going to come through. Yeah. And if they hung around, uh, they'd never be able to f- get to the bottom of it and figure out what's going on. So I guess they just like had to get away. And, you know, when he sees them, he goes, look, there's a body upstairs. Don't touch it. Yeah. You know, treat it as a quarantine thing. So... You know, I, I guess at that point, though, he doesn't know it's a weapon or anything like that. He just thinks it's an infection, it's a disease, it's a um, some sort of, you know, some biological... sort of biohazard. Yeah, he doesn't know that it's a weapon, effectively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's no real proof that it would turn someone like that e- either, is there? Yeah, yeah. But this, this all leads to the actual place being locked down, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a there's there's a, there's a ship explodes in one of the docks, not the dock where Ross is in, fortunately, mm-hmm. but because of that, there's a radiation hazard. Yep. And so, all of a sudden, everyone's being sent to, and I'm finger quoting here, radiation shelters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's concentration camps, really, isn't it? Oh, it's worse than that. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, and, and they figure out that you know, as soon as the the thing goes off, the CPD guys are in there. They're kind of driving people towards these things. They're funneling them there. They realise this has all been expected. This has been set up. Yeah, they know. They figure out that the ship was. They knew the ship would explode. This was all planned. Um, yeah, and and you know, yeah. So Miller goes off because you know he's going to 
you know, try and find out what happened and all that. And you've got Alex and Amos have gone back to Verossi and uh, Naomi's going to Holden. This isn't your fault. It's not your problem, you know. And he goes like, well, I'm making it my problem. And he's off after Hurt Miller. Yeah, Miller has the chance to to take out this scientist as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got a he's got a shot of uh, Dresden, but I think as Holden points out, if, if he shot him, a you won't get any answers, and b you'd be dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he would have been taken out straight away. But okay, so the, the, this has all been oh, this has all been manufactured. So the whole of Eros is controlled by the CPU, is that correct? CPD. So CPD, CPD is being, well, Dresden says they work for him. Yeah. And we find out that CPD is being pretty much completely replaced with uh, series gang members. Because as Miller, you know, gets that one, you know, after he shoots the other one in the throat, which was great. Yeah. And he's like, you're one of these, um, the series gangs, what are you doing here? And if you recall back to, I think episodes two or three, where we had uh, Matteo, the little belter kid, yeah. stealing water. Yeah. And he said the gangs had left. And Miller's like, why would any gang leave this? No gangs leave this. Someone else moves in. He's like, no, they've all gone. Well, now we know where they've all gone to. They've all come to Eros. And when he stood there letting that water drip on him, that is the, the bit where he's like, yeah, okay. I think he's putting two and two together there yeah. or something like that. But yeah, he's, he kind of has the guy... Um, and he's interrogating him, which I thought was a great scene. Especially Holden's like, uh, "You're gonna, you know, if if they want these people in the shelters, then we should want them out." Mm. And he had a great little put down for Miller. He goes, "You used to be a cop, or you a cop like him?" And that that cut deep. Mm. That was that was good. And I I like how uh, we got, we've got to go get him there. And he just shoots the guy and goes, "We've got to better go and get this officer some help." <laughs> yeah, they they use that to. They used the the gang member to get in into a, a certain area, don't they? Well, to get up to a shelter without being stopped or anything like that, mm. um, and, and me, then me, get them to clear off, like you know, help outside that yeah, sort of thing. Well, because it had already kicked off with uh, some other CPDs guys shooting civilians and uh, shooting at Sema and um, Amos. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, it, it's all going down, and we get to the shelter open up the door, but everyone's kind of passed out. Now We saw we saw earlier when they were going in there, they were all being given an iodine injection to help with the radiation. Bullshit. That yeah. is the the green, the, oh, not the green, the blue, the blue gunky stuff. The, yeah, the, yeah. What did you call it again? The pro... Proto molecule. Proto, proto molecule. Yeah. yeah. That's there. That's... Yeah. Okay. Is that them testing to see what would happen with it and how they can kill it later on because obviously what we hear at the very end of the episode. Yeah, I can't really comment on that. <laughs> but but yeah, they're deliberately injecting that proto-molecule stuff into them and then sending them into these radiation shelters. Yeah. But when they open it up, everyone's passed out dying or whatever you don't know and then all of a sudden you get a little warning light flashes and then there's this big blue light kind of bathes the entire thing and they suddenly realize oh fuck they've just been exposed to a massive amount of irradiation this reminded me do you remember superman when he's in the in the chamber yeah a little bit <laughs> it is a little bit isn't it they they say oh no no the radiation's out here. You go in there, you be safe. And it's the total opposite of things. Now, okay, I know you can't say anything. The way I see it, they're giving them this blue stuff, this proto, proto molecule. That's it. And sending them in there and then wiping it with radiation to see if that stops it at all, to, to kill it completely off that's the only way I, I i would see they would wipe them with radiation ah well i'll refer you to a line they said earlier in this episode the yeah. dresden said the only way we can learn about it is by letting it learn okay and we've already seen 
this thing seems to quite like reactors, like we saw in the Anubis. When it turned on the reactor, it started getting big. What are you saying? Oh, I flipping hate this. <laughs> when I'm trying to work stuff out, I go all quiet and or I just mutter to myself. So to give it a massive dose of radiation, you're it it's learning. You're teaching right, right, it. Right, right, let, let me put it this way. With this proto molecule, what they're doing here is they're basically injecting the proto molecule into as many people as they can do. Mm. So think of Eros as a massive petri dish. Yeah. And what they've done is they've manufactured this disaster. They've gotten people into these specific locations, injected each of them with the proto molecule, and then they've basically just turned on the oven to see what's going to cook. Okay. To see what comes out after a the little other while. side. Okay. Yeah. That's but, what it is. This is a uh, what they're doing with Eros is effectively treating it as a, like I said, as a petri dish, mm-hmm. as a, a giant experiment. And they've been throughout the entire series in the background, they've been building up to this moment. This is this has been Jules Pierre's ultimate goal here is to to do this experiment. To do this experiment, why all eyes are turned towards Mars and Earth who are against each other. Exactly, because mm-hmm. no one pays attention to the murder capital of the belt, as mm-hmm. uh, as we were told it was last time. I, I presume that Eros is small enough that it's you know kind of beyond everyone's notice, but has enough of a population for them to do this experiment. Right. And in the meantime, Holden and Miller get a massive dose of this radiation. Yeah, they're um, they're pretty fucked. <laughs> okay, so okay, they've totally wiped their bodies. Now the way, please, I, I don't want them to take a dose of this stuff. That's, of the proto molecule. Yeah, that's just a. I'm a guffin. Yeah, it feels like it. Mm. But then again, there's no real cure for killing all the cells in your body, is there? Well, there's not today. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> they, they could, like, get new arms and legs sewn on. Or I was going to say, it's the, it's the future. I'm sure you take this pill, take two in the morning, and uh, <laughs> you'll be fine. Space pairs again. That's exactly, all it is. Yeah. Space, space pairs. pairs. Need some more space pairs. Yeah. Okay, so am I going to learn a hell of a lot or be able to put things together in the next episode? I yes. should do, really, shouldn't I? You, you you will. I mean, next week, you know, without giving anything away, as I said at the beginning of this, this was originally aired as a big booster episode, effectively. Yeah. So really, you're just at the midway point of the episode. And the series ends in such a way that while there are many questions still unanswered, it does end in such a way that if they didn't get a season two, you could probably just say, oh, okay, well, I kind of have a sense of where this is going. Yeah. So you will get some answers next week. Good, good. I need them. I need them. I'm I'm almost there. So as it stands at the moment, we have the stealth ships are from Earth. Mm-hmm. They've been commissioned by the head of the... Oh, e- EU? Oh, I forget what it is. The UNN? UNN. We don't know that. We don't know that. Nope. But they have been. We don't know that. But we don't know that, but they have been. No, we don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and Eros is now funky. Don't go there. There's like a big sign outside saying, yeah, no entry. Lots of uh, yellow and black tape all the way around it. That is... Yeah, it's a hole. Don't go there at all. But it it is a a science experiment. Yeah. So where is where is Pierre? Is he on Earth? Yeah, I think he's on Earth, or or he is. He he's not an Eros. No. I think it's safe to say. No. Why he, would he, he be? He is. 
He's he, running he, that experiment. He's somewhere safe. Yeah. <laughs> he ain't going to be on there. That, no. That's crazy talk. He's got money and, well, I'm assuming he has money. And Oh, he he has money and people to do that for him. So. Yeah, exactly. You don't get your hands dirty doing that sort of stuff. You just nod and go, okay, yes. I'm. That's a shame that all these people died for the the calls. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so okay, I'm I'm looking forward to getting answers on this. Yes, mm. yes, we 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 are close. Uh, the next episode is called Leviathan Wakes. Oh, okay, right. So, uh, so that, so I don't know if that tells you anything. That's also the name of the first book of the uh, Expanse series. Oh, is it okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and as I said to you before, uh, season one and the first half of season two encompass the first book. Yep. So it, it kind of keeps a a pretty brisk pace when we get into season two, but that's for later. Good. Okay. Just on the book, mm-hmm. whereabouts are we in the book? I'm not, I've heard that the books are slightly different and characters haven't been brought in or uh, brought into the TV show earlier. But whereabouts are we in the book? Are we about halfway? Three quarters oh, I, of the way I, through? I, I haven't read the books, so I couldn't tell you. Oh, okay, fair play. Uh, the, the, the person I think you want to ask is Mr. Medcalf. Uh, oh. he, I know he's read the books. Yeah. Or at least the first couple. But no, uh, I haven't read the books because I want to experience the Expanse TV show first. Yeah, and then afterwards I'll go back and read them. Good man. So that's that's uh, that's what I'm doing there. Cool. Once 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 we do do this, though, we can do the books and we'll do an episode of a derelict tour on this or something, you know. So. Mm. Definitely. So, yeah. Well, there we go. Uh, that brings us to the end, and I'm glad to report that I don't have any weird funguses growing out my mouth just yet. So uh, I think it's probably a good time for you to plug your where, sir. Okay. Wow. Where do I start? Well. This weekend, we're recording... Well, we're back with the Grand Prix podcast. We are. We're, we're recording a liveries episode where we, we're going to be talking about the colours of the cars and don't they look pretty? And, oh, dear, they look a bit rank, don't they? And we'll so, be talking about testing as well. Yeah, testing. And asking uh, the big questions that everyone's been asking. Where's Ted? And possibly answering that as well, won't we? Yeah, we'll probably answer it as well, but still. <laughs> yeah. So that is on the Grand Prix Podcast.com and Rogue2Media.com and all the other places that you can pick up podcasts, iTunes and all the Android places as well. If it's in a place that you want it to be, but it, well, if it's not in a place that you want it to be, but you, you wish it to be there, let us know and we'll stick it there. The same with this episode as well. If it's, if you're listening to this on the website or you want to listen to it in a different place, let us know. And we'll try and sort something out as soon as we can for you. What else do I do? The Black Dog Podcast, blackdogpodcast.com as well. That's our film review show. And this week, just gone, I missed out because I was on night call, so I I couldn't review Overlord, which is a Mighty Fire B movie. So I, I, I didn't get to put my thoughts down which is a bit of a shame but i think please, next week's uh into the spider verse isn't it yes it is yeah mm, excellent choice um, well is it yes well you know i'm like with superhero movies have you seen it no i haven't no oh yeah. it's it's good anyway yeah right. i know what you're like but it is still good <laughs> okay cool uh, i think that's it for now anyway is it are, are you got any flicks capacitors coming up soon uh, not the foreseeable future. Not on the okay. moment, no. Fair enough, fair enough. But you can still uh, listen to all the ones you've done previously over at Rogue 2 Media. That's correct, yes. As you said, and, and that's also where you can find most of the stuff I've done uh, with Elton. Uh, I'm also on The Great Derelict, which is at greatderelict.libsyn.com, or on Road to Media, where I talk about anything and everything to do with science fiction with a different guest. Uh, what did I do most recently? Uh, I did one on tie-in novels. Uh, including a Star Trek novel on a Gilbert and Sullivan planet. Yes, this is a real thing. So, uh, yeah, go check that out. It was quite fun. Mm. Um, we've got some episodes coming up soon. Hopefully going to do one with your good self about uh, uh, the Opportunity Rover, which recently mm. uh, passed away on Mars. Very sad, that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, 
any, any anything and everything to do with science fiction is kind of a remit. Um, also check out our good friends over at the broadcast who do Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica and also Hypnobobs with uh, Jim Moon doing everything, I think. Is there anything Jim doesn't do? No, I think the recent, no, there's not a recent episode, but I think it was, wasn't it Judge Dredd's birthday or the, the, the anniversary of his comic book debut? And it's not a re-release, but he tweeted about that episode, which I, I want him to do more Judge Dredd, but he, he hasn't done it so far. So it's, well, you know, you know what? I, I, I want to mm. drag him onto the derelict and we'll talk Judge Dredd with him for you. There you that, go. that'd be great. Thank you very yeah. much working on it for you we'll, we'll, we'll get it happening if you listen to this Jim you've got a date with a derelict <laughs> sounds like a good Bond vid film that doesn't it date with a derelict yeah I like that okay, I can, I can yeah, make that one yeah. cool um, cool I, I think that's everything uh, I mean uh, hopefully I'll be back next week to do the next one uh, if not though Elton will be uh, injecting you all with uh, some iodine and asking you to proceed directly to the radiation shelters for your own safety goodbye goodbye